Howdy, howdy ho. First, for reference, my listening experiences. This Plantronics 800LX is, or was, primarily my Xbox headset now used with my PC. This Sennheiser HDR170 is my video editing headset. And this rebranded JBL Duet NC is for listening to music. I'll be making comparisons to these along the way, so let's get right into it. Is there a good way to cradle the headset in your hands? Gently like a baby? I immediately give credit to Microsoft for sticking to the minimalist designs they've been using as of late. The headphones are clean looking and the neon green line around each cup is a nice touch. The build quality feels relatively sturdy and the dials have a sort of resistance to them that gives them a more precise feel. Unfortunately, from here it starts to go downhill. The cups use what feels like fake leather, which does a great job of sealing around your ear to improve sound, but unfortunately are not that breathable. After a few hours of play, my ears started to feel warm and unfortunately, moist. Furthermore, while the padding at the top seemed sufficient, I started to feel the pressure and soreness at the top of my head. Unlike the 800LX, which uses a secondary band to disperse pressure, all this padding beyond the center part that sits on your head is, well, rather useless. Now if you got a big head like I do, you probably struggle to get out the front door every day. But if your head is also physically large, then this headset is smaller than it appears. For reference, just to get the ear cups over my ears, I had to extend both sides all the way. And then I was able to shorten each side by about one click to reduce the pressure on the top. All in all, it's not a poorly designed headset, as its aesthetics are attractive, but it's definitely on the small side, which means a lot of undue pressure for larger heads, and its non-breathable ear cups means it's not so favorable in warmer weather. The most important part about gaming online is making sure you don't sound like a mumbling basement dweller. For that, the headset has built-in mic monitoring. But how do you sound on the other end? Well, once again, using the 800LX as a reference point, not so great. My clarity is good enough. Here, have a listen. World Premiere Xbox Exclusive. World Premiere Xbox Exclusive. World Premiere Xbox Exclusive. Lastly, there's a mic light to let you know when you're unmuted, but when it's aligned with my mouth, I can't actually see the light. It seems to me the boom mic needs to be a little longer, and that might be a factor in the mediocre mic audio quality. Greater physical distance from your mouth means requiring more amped mic gain. The headset uses 40mm drivers, and that's where it gets interesting. I will say that in order to get the full use out of the headset, you gotta use Dolby Atmos. Without it, the headset sounds rather standard, but bass favored rather than balanced like my HDR 170s. In fact, I'm fairly sure this headset's firmware sound profiles were tuned for Dolby Atmos in particular, as I found Windows Sonic and DTSX to sound notably worse. The shocker there is DTS, which in my experience has always sounded better than Dolby because of its higher bit rate. Having said all that, with Dolby Atmos in use, the headset punches above its weight in overall sound quality and spatial depth, though the bass can be a bit too punchy. You'll want to keep the bass overall a little lower than you might want because at higher levels the punch can also begin to distort sound output. This is achieved by spending quality time with the equalizer and that's the part where this headset gets an edge on other less than $100 headsets. Fine tuning. And this is where it definitely beats my 800LX. In order to drive this point home, when listening to music on my phone where I cannot fine tune and cannot use Dolby Atmos, these JBL Duet NCs have superior sound all across the board. Without Dolby Atmos, this headset is fairly unnoteworthy, so if you want to fine-tune your audio experience, do it with Dolby Atmos. With immediate reference points to compare to, I can get a very clear picture of where this headset sits in the grand scheme of things. In many ways, it's a low-tier headset. Non-breathable ear cups, smaller overall size, and mediocre mic quality. Where it wins is its focus on tunability, specifically with Dolby Atmos. That combination is where it beats other budget headsets to provide a far better listening experience even if you gotta keep the bass down. In reality though, it's still just a sub $100 headset, so if you're a partial audiophile like me, you're just not gonna be impressed. I believe Xbox should release an elite version of this using 50mm drivers, a longer boom mic, and professional audio tuning. That'll appeal more to people like me who want a better gaming headset experience without breaking the bank. I'll see you next time on the Gaming 5.